like a lot of America in the last few weeks, I've started to become a little lonely and a little stir crazy, which is why I begged my staff to find me a safe way to interact with my fellow humans again. Thanks to coronavirus, much of the world is under lockdown, but I wanted to take advantage of this beautiful spring day and socialize in an innovative way. Oh my God, look at all the people. I became a robot. This is great. <gasps> hi, hi. Check me out, I'm a robot. Wait, wait, wait. For some reason, people found me unapproachable. Buddy, buddy, where's your mask? Be safe. But then. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. Look at all the stuff you have in your basket. Can I see your flowers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. <sighs> Thank you for that. Even though I love flowers, I'm still being safe. My producer and her boyfriend shot this themselves while maintaining a reasonable distance from other people. Ready, Sam? Yep. Okay, here we go. Where are we going? Uh, uh, they might break up because of me, but at least they'll be healthy. Anyway, man, there are a lot of New Yorkers out here. Wonder how they're doing. Let's put it this way. Two months okay. ago, we're on the C train getting pushed up. Yeah. So you're like, a, you basically have a man's penis on your back. And now sure. all of a sudden it's like, oh, we gotta be six feet apart. Well, hopefully for that guy, his penis is six feet long. Well, we've all seen that on the subway too, so. Boy, we have all <laughs> seen that. keep it away. New Yorkers are unstoppable. They're still going on runs. Oh, can I jog with you? Can I jog with you? They're still walking their dogs. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. And they're all doing this. Are you using video chat in your regular life? Yes, it's great to be able to connect with people. It is. I can even move towards you. Look, look at this. Wait, six feet. I think that the technology thing is like really helpful. I was able to have my parents at my Passover Seder for the first time in 10 years. Wow. So that was nice. Okay. Are you working from home now? Are you able to do that? What's, what's I am working your from home, deal? yeah. So I work for a watch company. I'm still doing that, but instead of traveling to the stores. Where am I, I going? I don't know. What's happening? I have to park. Hold on. There. Park. No, I'm still kind of wiggling around. Ah! Ow! Ow! Okay, video chatting can't stop gravity, but it does connect teachers to students and late night comedy hosts to their fans. I'm going for a walk with Samantha B. This is kind of like the highlight of my week. Mine too! Wait, who else is using this? <gasps> Another robot friend! Who are you? Wally! Uh, just kidding. It's Dr. Javaharian. Oh, hey. When not playing Wally, -E, Dr. Javaharian is a founder of Carbon Health, a company that connects healthcare providers and patients via telemedicine. Basically, a technological house call. How do you get regular people? to adapt to this. Frankly, technology has been a huge burden for a long time. If you're older, you might have a harder time onboarding. What you're saying is that when my mother-in-law makes her first telemedicine appointment, she's gonna do the whole appointment like this. There's a mole on my back. <laughs> I can't, hello? <laughs> Hello. Thanks to COVID-19, never thought I'd say that, more insurance companies and Medicare are covering virtual visits. It's a telemiracle. But how do you do a telehealth in the time of corona? When we had our first patients come in that we were worried about, we realized, oh, we need to assess, are they appropriate to go into the clinic or should they go to the emergency department? And if you send them to the clinics, we would call the clinic ahead of time and say, hey, we've got someone sick coming in, make sure you're protected. And I'm happy to say that even though we've tested over 10,000 patients, none of our doctors or staff have caught coronavirus. What? Does Dr. Fauci have your number? He obviously does not. What else is Dr. Javaharian doing? We worked with a laboratory partner to create an at-home test for coronavirus. We can send tests anywhere in the United States, have patients swab their mouths. So it's similar to like when you do um, a spit test on 23andMe. Oh, like you find out whether or not you have coronavirus and then you also find out that your entire life was a lie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Telemedicine is a very good idea, and when used correctly, it helps everyone. Tell me about how telemedicine could be used with respect to abortion. There's a large body of evidence that early abortion, so less than 10 weeks, can be safely cared for via telemedicine. 
and medication administration. In Europe, it's readily available, but in the U.S. there are barriers that seem to be man-made. And do you foresee a future in which those barriers will be broken down? I mean, absolutely. What we're hoping is one of the positive things that comes out of coronavirus is adding another choice for patients to access care. I mean, imagine if you're living in a small town where the local doctor is maybe you know, someone you go to church with, and Mm -hmm. you have a concern that you want to remain private. Right. I don't want to show this herp to Dr. Kevin. I'm going to drive two towns over. Yeah. I'm going to call you up every time another herp emerges. Oh, God. Come back! Herpes and coronavirus aside, seeing people make the best of this situation is inspiring this old witch to try new things, like ride a bicycle. Will you go for a bike ride with me? Of course, I'd love to. Look at us! We're riding together! Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I'm half crazy over the love of you. If you liked this video, hit subscribe and let me know in the comments below. And if you didn't like this video, I'm sure you've already left a comment. Thank you so much!